going back to Henzo training at his academy, do you have a personal relationship with him at all? Or? I know Henzo and he knows me and he's the greatest guy. He's been in some of my fights, watched me fight. And I don't really have like a close relationship with the guy, but he's definitely someone that I watched also as a kid. I remember watching like Henzo Gracie versus like a karate guy or like, you know, like his family members fighting like, you know, various martial art guys. And so that was something I always watched as a young kid. And like I remember saying to myself, like, wow, I'd love to train with the Gracies. And now here I am, and I'm a brown belt under John Danahar, and you know he's the main coach at uh, at Henzo. So it's pretty cool to say that uh, I guess I'm a Gracie fighter in a sense. It seems like you have a different coaches with different kinds of personalities. I know lots of times fighters train separately with their coaches. You're not going to train with. Jason and Mike at the same time sometimes. How is it for you to put that all together when you're in the cage? All my coaches are on the same page. They all have the same mindset and they want me to do the same things and they, they usually agree on, say, an opponent and what I should do with an opponent. So like today, for instance, I trained at Henzo's and I'll do the class and then I'll drill with my coach Mike and he'll tell me that he wants me to do this, this and this and I'll do what he wants me to do then. And, a couple hours later, I come down here with Jason and he'll dig into me and bust my balls as much as he can until I uh, correct it. Do you train anywhere specific for wrestling or anything like that? I go to Edge Hoboken. Uh, I just started going there as well. I was luckily enough in, in most of my pro fights that I was the better wrestler. But now that I'm in UFC, I definitely have to close all the gaps. So that's what I'm trying to do. I actually also just started working with the sports therapist. And, he works with the, uh, the Israeli counterterrorism team, and, and he also works with Olympians. So he's like a sports-specific therapist. So I'm trying to close the mental and the physical gaps of, like, as my approach to fighting. At Edge, do you work with Cody or Jeff? Yeah, I work with Cody, Jeff, and uh, Espo. You know, they're all, it's a collective uh, group effort. A lot of my teammates train there as well. So like I said, we're all on the same page, and all my coaches, they all know each other. You know, the guys at Edge, Mike and, and Jason, they all have cornered the same guys in multiple fights, so uh, it's like perfect for me. What's the mindset that you have going into a fight? Well, I have this like motto that like, I know I already won the fight. I just have to have time elapse until it's set in stone, and I just got to have to go execute. And what's the hardest part for you about a fight camp? A daily grind, and I, I cut a decent amount of weight, so diet's like, one thing that I have to dial in on more so now, especially that I'm in UFC, you know, they can call you any day and tell you they want you to fight. And you know, that's a huge part of it, I think, you know, feeling good in fight camp while you're cutting the weight and then the rehydration process and then when you get in the cage. But I've cut a decent amount of weight and I fought five rounds before, so. My last fight was four rounds, so I know I could, I know I could push the pace for a long period of time. Confident you can go the distance, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. I have already. And you're based out of Queens, correct? And so you love the UFC, you watched all this stuff growing up. Now, you know, it's one year anniversary of MMA being legalized in New York. You were recently on a panel talking about that. What changes have you seen in the New York fighting scene since that legalization? You no, know, a lot more leagues have popped up in the New York area. Uh, more gyms, the caliber of guys are getting better. I remember when I was 17, I was fighting in Jersey. This is over. 10 years ago now that and like the guys in New York weren't as good as the guys like in Jersey or Pennsylvania. You know, I always have to travel to fight, which I still have to do. I haven't fought in New York yet. I think um, they need to kind of just get the commission together a little better and everyone needs to be on the same page and, and there's a lot of on the business side stuff that has to be worked out more, I believe. You know, to make it better for the fighters, the promoters, everyone together. You are fighting in Texas. And like you said, you haven't fought in New York yet, but even the rules are different from Texas in New York City. Do you feel like having one unified rule all across the states would be helpful for the fighter? Yeah, because you know, I actually saw an article on this the other day. It's kind of unfair, like, you know, you think the rules are one way and then you go to another place and they're another way and you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know this. So yeah, I think it would be good if all the rules are unified all the commissions follow the same protocols just to make it you know easier on everyone so everybody knows okay this is how it has to be and i think it should be like that country to country as well because if it's one way here and then you go to say brazil and play it's different out there you know it might sway you a bit do you plan on ever 
leaving the country to fight? Is that something you would like to do for the UFC? Oh yeah, definitely. I fought in Mexico four times early on in my career. Uh, it was crazy. Fighting for an organization like UFC in another country, I'm sure it will be a great experience. And yeah, definitely. Like I would love to have fighting as a way to get me out of the country and yeah, pay for my trip to go somewhere and get paid to fight and win and, and make a name for myself. That's definitely part of the part of the plan. Uh, even though you just got signed and you know you're everything that you're working towards is kind of shining now. What do you plan on doing after you're done fighting? Like I said before, the goal is to help others. I, I want to develop something, some sort of program or charity or something along those lines where, where I could, you know, help other people through through my work. You know, that's that's like my passion now. And I've only come to realize that within the last year or so that it's not about me, it's about other people. Because when you keep, when you're selfish and it's all about you, then things tend to not work out the way you'd want them to. Maybe for some people they do. But when I look at like certain fighters, a lot of people, a lot of fighters have, you know, influenced other people to do better with themselves. And oh yeah, like this person is such a huge role model. But a lot of these guys, like what are they really contributing to society? You know, someone like Conor McGregor, like yeah, he's an amazing fighter. And I respect his ability and the things that he has done in fighting, they're amazing. But the guy, like he's kind of, like what, what, what's his message really? He doesn't, from what I've seen, he hasn't really set like, a positive trend with people. Yeah, people love him, but, but like, what is he doing to like actually help people? I think something like that could really greatly affect our society, and uh, I think that's the way it should be for all these people. And, and if it's all about you, then you're gonna be miserable at the end of the day. What you are saying sounds very different than the person you would have been several years ago. That mentality of, it's not about me, I don't wanna be selfish, I wanna help other people. And um, I'm certain martial arts had a big role to play in that. How do you feel like martial arts has made you into the person, the man that you are today? If it wasn't for fighting, I'd probably be dead or in prison. Because that was like, when I was at bottom, like that was like something that I still saw at the end of the tunnel. So it definitely saved my life. And martial arts is like a life lesson. It's not just about fighting and being a good fighter. It's like, you know, discipline and integrity and, and being like a stand-up person. I think that I need to give it back. My final question is, who are the people that you feel like have inspired you the most? My older brother Dylan, a huge one. He uh, had the same story as me and, and he's really, uh, he's created a family, he's got two kids, he's got a great job helping people as well in like the recovery uh, industry. So he's someone that, that helped me along the way a lot. My AA sponsor, Tommy, saved my life and is showing me how to live like a, as a normal human and, uh, and uh, my teammates and coaches, they have really uh, helped me along the way if it wasn't for them and you know, I don't know, I remember the last time I was in rehab, I came out of detox and I called Jason and uh, he was like, yeah, I'm happy uh, you're doing better, you know, but uh, this is it, like uh, you screw up again, I'm like I'll never, I'm not going to deal with you anymore and not to sound like sappy, but like, you know, I didn't want to lose him as a person like in my life. His uh, tough love has really helped me a lot and, you know, gave me the will and determination to, to get this.